and welcome to another episode of Shopping for the Real You. I'm Andrea Flommer, the author of Shopping for the Real You. And you, boy oh boy, are you in for a treat today. My guest is Janet Cunliffe. And if you have read my book, uh, the second edition of my book, then you have already been introduced to her website, which is called The Fashion Fit Formula. And that gives you a capsule of what her website is about, but there is so much more to this. And before we get into the details, I want to tell you about this remarkable woman that you're about to meet. Janet Cunliffe began sewing for herself, as did many of us, uh, at the age of nine out of necessity. A lot of us weren't, be, weren't going to be buying couture clothes. Uh, her mother knitted all her own sweaters. But by the time she was a teenager, she was so expert at this that she entered and won a very major competition, which eventually landed her at some of the uh, at, uh, Paris couture houses, where she learned the very fine details of uh, construction and cutting. <laughs> and in the meantime, uh, with that powerful brain that she has, had a a cognition, it's the only word that I can use to describe this, Janet had a cognition of how to determine appropriate uh, portions and balance in clothing. And that's what we're going to talk today about. She's going to explain to you how she came up with this whole concept of the fashion fit formula and what a remarkable benefit it can be for everybody, um, whether you sew your own clothes or not. So. Janet, it's such an honor to welcome you here today. Tell our, our viewers how you got started on the Fashion Fit formula. Well, the first thing is I'm dyslexic. So I see things different than other people, which is a tremendous, tremendous gift. When I look at people, I don't see people per se as much as I see geometric, geometric uh, figures within them. Like at the top of everybody's body, they have a trapezoid. It goes straight across the neck, and then the sides go in, and then straight across the bust. Now, depending upon how big this trapezoid is, depends upon how whether you can wear a large scarf, or whether you have to tuck the scarf in like I did, or how much jewelry you can wear. Because if you don't have much space, then you're very, very limited. And, and there's all different uh, pieces of geometric things that I see throughout the entire body. I've got like the tricky trapezoid, which is down by your hips. And the, um, I, I, I gave them all names, uh, the evil, almost like the evil empire. But anyway, how I got involved with Fashion Fit Formula is I went an internship in, to Yves Saint Laurent in Paris. And I was in the cutting and the, um, cutting room and the pattern designing room. But I never felt like I looked good. And everybody was telling me, you know, I was five foot two and 105 pounds, you know, come on. They said my clothes were just sewn to perfection. But the reality is I didn't feel good in them. I, I knew I did not look as good as the models that in 17 Magazine was mine, whatever. So. Mm -hmm. When I got back, I tried to draw, well, when that period of time was over, I returned to college and I was taking art and I tried to draw a life-size picture of me for my mother to hang in her um, foyer. Uh, she was so happy that that failed. When I tried to draw that picture, I used the standard of eight heads and I realized that the picture was 5'7", I was 5'2", there were five missing inches which explained why clothes didn't fit right. Remember, this is long before petite clothes ever came about. Then I, I figured out where the missing inches were, but I am a mass savant. I can do complicated problems in my head. I can't put them down on paper. And it took me about a year and a half to figure out that it was a combination of angles and, and a uh, regression to get the exact formula, but to my surprise, it worked not only on me, but on every single person I tried it on. Wow. But wow. it was it was just phenomenal. I consider it divine intervention. I mean, that's the only thing because nobody's ever seen it. 
Um, and but it was 1968. And my husband was I was married, and my husband was graduating from getting his master's, going off to Vietnam, going into the military. And I left the University of North Carolina and was started to work for Eastern Airlines. And then eventually with Eastern, we moved, well, he went to Texaco and I was still with Eastern. We're living out in Oklahoma. Now, Tulsa is a fabulous place, but it is not the fashion capital of the world. <laughs> so so I, uh, I did a lot of things. I stayed in sales and then I didn't graduate from college until I was 38. And then I went on to get a master's and, and went to school for law. But my love was always fashion. And um, I, I remember being in a store in downtown Tulsa thinking, if only I could figure out a way to make money with clothing. But that was not to be. So anyway, that's how it started. It, uh, uh, let me skip it, jump ahead. I retired at age 58. I wanted to go back to work, but not to go back to anything involving law or disputes. I was helping people with their clothes, as I always did. And I met this woman called Kathy McFadden. And Kathy had a whole pile of clothes um, that she was giving away. And I kept saying, no, don't. I mean, they, they have Nordstrom stags on them, for heaven's sake, Kathy. You can't give them away. Kathy, of course I can. I only go to the best, you know. So I said, just try it on and let me try it on. So she tried it on. I, I did it in minutes. I, I was able to, to, to pin it. And she says what everyone says. I look taller and thinner. And I said, uh-huh. We went through all the outfits that she had. She looked great. Kathy and I sort of at that point were oil and water. Um, Kathy was extremely organized. I was a flake. I was all over the place. I have attention deficit. I have dyslexia, you know, whatever. And I just sort of take life as it comes. But Kathy is very, very, very organized. So about a year after that happened, Kathy called me. Well, actually, I had a conversation with God. And I said, look, God, I don't know what to do. I can, by this point, I was giving seminars on how not to hire, have, how not to have to hire someone like me to come in and straighten out your company. I was a corporate <laughs> attorney, not, not, a, um, not a practicing law attorney. And then, or I could go and do something with the fashion fit formula that I was always thought was a divine gift. And I said, I will wait to March 31st. This was January 1st, 2003. I said, if a partner shows up, I'll know I'm supposed to do fashion. It wasn't called fashion fit formula. It'll do my crazy formula thing. And if one doesn't, it doesn't. This is where I became convinced that God is a man because he heard Kathy McFadden partner March 31st, and it was probably off um, doing football games or whatever else goes on on New Year's Day. But what I had said is I want a partner like Kathy McFadden, but not Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> on March the 6th of that year, Kathy calls and says, I have been, I've, it's been on my mind to call you for over a month. I figured out how, what we can do with our formula. And I said, okay. And she said, we're going to sell it over the internet. I said, no one's going to buy anything over the internet. It was 2003. <laughs> and that's how it started. And um, it's been a merry-go-round. But we it's, have, it's a wonderful we have, we have so many women. What people, we look at it as the missing ingredient to fashion. Everybody dresses according to their, um, their body size, their body shape. That is the basic theory. You, you dress for your body shape. But the average woman wears only 20 to 30% of her clothes. That's right. So the right. 70, 80% are going unworn. So therefore, the body shape can't be the only thing. There's color. You need to have the color right. You need to have the body shape right. But what everybody is missing, what makes them feel frumpy, is the, the linear. They need the lens right. They need the jacket lens right. They need the neckline right. They need the, the sleeves right. And every person has a unique, except for identical twins, has a unique bone structure. Uh, over 
couple hundred thousand, we have not found duplicates, except for identical twins, as I said before. So everybody's, everybody's shirt lengths and, and uh, excuse me, jacket lengths, shirt lengths, sweater lengths, uh, capris, shorts, capes, everybody has a unique, perfect style for them. That's exactly right. A, a perfect number for them. Now, because it's math, we can go to one eighth of an inch. Would I hem something for an eighth of an inch? No. There's an inch leeway on this. You can go an inch either side of it and you'd be okay. I, for an inch, I probably would shorten it, but for a half an inch, nah, I'd just leave it because it's not going to make that big a difference. But math is precise, so we give it to you to the act to the one eighth of an inch. What you do to get the fashion fit formula is you take 12 easy measurements, the top of your head, your jaw, your chin, your breath, base of your neck, your breastbone, your elbow, your waist, your, where your leg joins, your torso, your knee, uh, your wrist, and your knuckle, and your uh, ankle. Not necessarily in that order, sort of mess that up. And then you enter it into the computer, and within 15 minutes, the computer will send you back your solution. Now, we price this so the average woman can afford it. It's $65. That's nothing. <laughs> but the big thing is it's a one-time purchase. That's right. You will That's never right. have to buy it again because your bones don't change. I know because I was 105 pounds and 5 foot 2. My knee was 18 and a half inches off the floor. Now, I'm a lot heavier than 105 pounds. I'm still just about 5 foot 2. And my knee is still 18 inches off the floor. It didn't change. So that's, that's such yeah. an important point. Is that, um, and, and I, you know, it's it's one of the most important things that I tell all of my readers, that proportion and balance and scale is the most important thing in what you wear. And you just said it right then, that your size. And this is a question that comes up constantly among our readers. Your your size. It may change the way you look, but it does not change your basic bone structure. That is no. not going to change. And that's why this formula is so brilliant. I honestly, you know, I'm not, I don't get anything out of this except personal satisfaction. I just think everybody should have this formula for themselves. Well, so do I. It's been, I can't tell you how many times Kathy and I have heard, we get letters, we get wedding invitations. I never dated. I never felt like I never felt like I could date. And then then I saw myself differently. I got the promotion I was going for. I changed the my clothes. I all of a sudden got recognized. You look more professional, you look more put together, you look sexier, you look taller, you look thinner. It just makes you look your best. And, and I know, I know I'm, I'm not going to give any names because I'm, you asked me not to, but I know that you've worked with some extremely famous people. And I watched yes. what they're wearing, and they always look perfect. And this is a way that anybody can look as elegant as these people they see on Instagram or in the news by just having applying these, the, these, these numbers, these proportions to their own tailoring. Well, I can't give the names because I've signed confidentiality I agreements understand. with most of them. But um, it's, uh, it, it just, I feel like it was a gift. It, it is just an incredible change. The difference of between where your jacket, jackets hang makes a difference whether you look frumpy or whether you look together. You know, it, I don't know if you can show any of the before or after pictures that I did. The other thing that I've been very involved in is um, landfills, preventing clothes from going into landfills. Uh, the microfabrics in particular destroy the earth. So I personally choose to buy most of my clothes in vintage stores or um, consignment shops because I like the old fabrics. I like the, I like the wools from Pendleton, and I, I've had things made for me by ordering wool from Pendleton, and I like the silks. And you, if you go in shopping, even in the best of stores, you don't find raw silk out there right. anymore. It's just not there. 
neither is organdy, neither, neither is really pure silk, the beautiful pure silk. You have silk blends, but they don't fall the same as 100%. And then there's degrees of, of, of um, silk as far as you used to be able to get the best, and it's just not, not on the market. I've even gone into New York and gone store after store after store trying to find the really exquisite fabrics. And I don't know where they are, but they don't make, they don't seem to make them the way they used to. So I, there's a lot with, uh, if you buy a vintage piece, don't look at what you're seeing, look at what it can be. With your proportions in mind, changing buttons, changing a neckline, it may sound like a lot if you don't sew, but you'll never be able to find that quality anywhere else. So. Yeah, <laughs> that's my it, bid for you're saving just, here. <laughs> you're just hitting all the buttons that, that speak to my heart. You know, it's so many of uh, the biggest complaint that I get from uh, from my readers is that they can't find natural fiber clothing anymore. You can find it. It's, it's out there, but it's not as elegant uh, as some of the old stuff that you'll find in vintage. And the other thing that you mentioned, uh, this whole big, you know, we... We're all into recycling, being so many people have been watching that wonderful series from Marie Kondo. But the, uh, w what I write about is it's better to have a few curated, really high quality pieces that you wear over and over again, because you'll always look fabulous. And instead of just buying something trendy that, as you talk about, is only going to be in your closet for a season or two, and then it's going to go and get recycled and eventually end up in a landfill somewhere. So I, I, just, I just love everything you're saying because it just is, it's truth. Well, one of the things that um, I tell people is that look at the garment that you're buying. How much does it cost? Then divide mentally by the number of times you think you're going to wear it. If you're buying a $300 dress and you're going to wear it twice, that's $150 of wearing. That, that's pretty high up there. But if you're, if you're paying $500 for something and you're going to wear it 100 times, you've gotten it down to $5 a wearing. And it's true. It's better to buy a, have a smaller wardrobe that looks great on you. It's tailored for you. It fits you. than a bunch of stuff that gets pushed to the back of your closet. How many times have you giving stuff away to your friends. How much money do you have in the back of your closet now that you don't wear? How about last year, the year before, the year before that? Do you have enough for a fantastic vacation or a great car or a tremendous savings account? If you, when you start adding it up, it really counts. So be smart. I, I talk to women all the time about being fiscally responsible for themselves. Be smart with your budget. It's better to spend a little more and get something wonderful. I just want to bring up this one thing because uh, wedding gowns. What do you do with your wedding gown? I took, I had uh, a young girl that need, had run out of money for a prom. So we took my wedding gown apart. She wore the, the top part as bustier with, with something mm -hmm. else. We made, we took the skirt of my wedding gown and made a bassinet cover, you know, long, uh -huh. those old fashioned bassinet uh -huh. covers. And, um, it was just amazing. I mean, if you look at things as differently than what they are, um, it's it's so much fun. Yeah. Uh, if you, yeah. you ever rip a leather, if you, I I spill black ink on my, on my leather jacket. I didn't know what to do, so I took the sleeves out of it and wore it as a vest. You know, there's just so much that can be done. And for young women, the most important thing, if you have a profession in mind. Think ahead. Is this piece going to be in my wardrobe this year, next year, the year after? If it is, splurge. Every every year you need to add one or two trendy things that are only intended to last a year or two. But you get your basics and you play, have your colors done. Find out what the best colors for you are. And then you have um, your proportions on your clothes and go to town. Be, who, be the best you can be, but it starts with, before you even talk, what you've got on speaks thousands of words. That's exactly right. Yes. 
you've said so many things that are greatly valued. And um, I just, I hope we can continue this conversation. And, and um, thank you all for watching. Make sure you check out her website, fashionfitformula.com. Mm -hmm.